Good day everybody and welcome back to the Board Game Museum's Top 100 Vintage Board Games and today we're going to be uh, doing numbers 90 through 81. we got some good ones here. Number 90 is Prize Property. This is an old Milton Bradley game and this is a land development game and what you're going to be doing is you're first going to be trying to develop land and then you're going to be trying to build nine buildings on three different sections of the land. You also have a little gavel that has these different colored marbles on there and uh, your opponent can challenge your development with them uh, with a lawsuit and you'll shake the hammer and then there'll be a marble that's going to drop down on the bottom and whatever color it is um, you'll either get it or you won't. Now, this is a pretty fun little game. It doesn't take very long to play either. The only thing is, is that it can get a little bit monotonous uh, because you're going to be doing the exact same things every turn. Um, of course, you know, the results might be different, but essentially you're going to be doing the same things. Uh, but this is a pretty cool little game. Uh, it is prize property. Number 89 is a kid's game, and it is called Donut Disaster. Uh, you have a very unique looking machine um, that turns on and is rather loud. Uh, but ultimately what you're trying to do is you're trying to get rid of your donuts. You're going to be rolling a die, and you've got five different colored donuts. And if whatever color you roll, you'll be able to place the donut onto the stick. And you're going to try to get rid of them. However, eventually the uh, machine is going to blow up, and all the donuts are going to fly off the stick. And whoever's turn it is has to catch as many of them as he can. Uh, whichever he catches, he'll be able to put back onto the machine. And any that he does not catch, he's going to have to put onto his side and try to get rid of. Um, this is yet another pretty fun game. Uh, the best part of this game is the shock value when the thing blows up because not only do you have to like get over your reaction but you still have to try to catch all of these donuts the only thing is i wish that they would have had it uh explode at different intervals uh it tends to seem to want to do it at the same interval which is around a minute or so uh if it could have been more random i think the game would have been more fun for what it is it's a pretty cool little game donut disaster Number 88 is Stop Thief. This is a little electronic game that has a gizmo. And what you're going to be trying to do is you're going to be trying to find these thieves uh, that are going to be around the board. Now, the thieves are going to be moving around the board, and you've got this unique little component uh, that's going to help track them. Um, and uh, they're all going to be worth a different amount of money when you catch them. And you also have cards that you can play to uh, help you as well. Uh, now, this game was reprinted, and it's a pretty cool little game. Uh, sometimes it seems the game can be a little bit easy, uh, but at other times, if they get outside of the buildings and they're running around and going into the subway, it can get a lot harder. Um, but this is a game that really is pretty fun for what it is. Uh, but this is Stop Thief. Number 87 is a 3M bookshelf game called Feudal. It is a chess-like game, and... Um, you're going to be trying to capture your opponent's castle or capture all of his royalty. Um, and there's uh, different pieces that have different abilities. Now, unlike chess, you're going to be able to move as many of these pieces as you would like to, and you can play with two or more players. Um, this is definitely a unique game. It's a strategy game, and uh, it's kind of like chess on steroids, I guess you can say, because you can uh, move all the different pieces around. They all have different abilities, and plus, playing with extra players can make it that much more chaotic. We have not played this game very much, uh, but... It's definitely a cool little game. Uh, it's very abstract looking with the pieces and the board. Uh, but 3M Bookshelf does a pretty good job making games, and this is one of their good ones. It is futile. Number 86 can best be described as Monopoly in Space, and this is Solar Quest. In Solar Quest, it's a space age real estate game, and you're going to be buying things like planets and moons and man made space structures. Um, the unique feature of this game is that it has. Uh, fuel stations that you need to uh, help keep your ship fueled because if you run out of fuel you're going to go ahead and lose the game and you can also shoot at your opponent with lasers as well um, so this is a game if you like Monopoly I think you'll definitely like Solar Quest uh, it tends to get a little bit long because in the version we have there's almost 50 different properties that you can get uh, of course the game can end a lot earlier than that if you end up running out of fuel or you get stuck or something like that or you get shot um, but Anyway, this is a pretty cool little Monopoly variant uh, set in space with some different elements in it uh, that make it more challenging. This is Solar Quest. Number 85 is a game that kind of surprised me, and it's based off an old video game, and it is Pac-Man the Board Game. In Pac-Man the Board Game, you're going to be trying to uh, get the most amount of marbles into your tray, and uh, you also have some Energizer marbles uh, that are going to be used to eat the ghost in the game. Now, you're going to be allowed to move your Pac-Man and one of your ghosts. Of course, you can eat your opponent with the ghost and send them back, which he'll, you'll end up getting marbles from him, and you'll also end up getting marbles if you eat a ghost yourself. Now, there's some strategy in this game. 
Uh, one thing is, of course, you can use the ghost to try to block your opponent. You can use your own piece to try to block your opponent. Uh, it's a pretty fun game. Uh, I was pretty surprised because it's a kid's game, and I thought it would just kind of be simple, but it's not. There's some strategy with this game. The Pac-Man components are really cool, too, because you can chomp the marbles with it. Uh, but yeah, I would recommend this game if you're a fan of Pac-Man and if you're a kid's uh, game fan, too. Number 84 is a puzzle game of sorts, and it is called Black Box. Now, in Black Box, what you're going to be trying to do is you're going to be trying to find atoms, which are going to be represented by balls. And the way you're going to be doing this is you're going to be uh, calling out coordinates on the game board, and uh, they're going to be called rays, like you're shooting rays. And uh, your opponent is either going to tell you that um, you've either hit it, it's reflected, or you've missed completely. If it reflects, that means you're either to the left or the right of the atom, and then it's going to go in that direction. But the interesting thing is, if it, if while it's going in that direction, it may end up to the left or the right of another atom, and it may go and get diverted again. And you've got these pieces that you're going to be using uh, to show where you've made the call and where the laser ended up at. And so you're having to use uh, the process of elimination and deduction to try to figure out where they are. Uh, very cool game. I know that there are computer variants of this game out there. And uh, if you're a fan of puzzle games or trying to deduce things, I would definitely recommend getting this game. It's Black Box. Number 83 is a board game that has two tiers, and it is called Chopper Strike. On the bottom, you're going to have jeeps, and on the top, you're going to have helicopters. And what you're going to be trying to do is you're going to be trying to either eliminate the jeeps or the helicopters. Uh, the jeeps have different movements than the helicopters do, so it's like you're playing two different versions of checkers. Uh, the jeeps can shoot each other. They can shoot at the choppers and vice versa. And whatever you roll on the die is going to mark how much you can move your jeeps and your copters. Um, this is another pretty cool game. Strategy game, light. Uh, but the dice is what makes this game interesting because you're going to be limited into what you roll on the die. If you end up getting some high rolls, that can be good, but you might not get them, so you might have to think a little bit more defensively. Uh, but I like the two-tier uh, system that this game has. Um, this is one of the reasons why I love the older board games is because they have elements like this. So, Chopper Strike. Number 82 is a little bluffing game called Ghost from Milton Bradley. In Ghosts, you're going to be in charge of four good ghosts and four bad ghosts. What you're going to be trying to do is you're going to try to capture all four of your opponent's good ghosts, but you're also going to try to avoid getting four of the bad ghosts because you can lose that way. But you can also win if you get one of your good ghosts um, into your opponent's corridor on the corner of the board. Uh, great bluffing game. Uh, this game is all about trying to trick your opponent uh, and also having to watch what he is doing as well. If you like bluffing games, this is definitely one I would recommend. You just you just got to be careful about capturing those bad ones, but it's always cool when you end up capturing one of your opponent's good ghosts. I uh, like the different winning conditions that this game has, too. Um, it's fun. Ghosts. And finally, number 81 is the game Big John. This is a game that involves a toilet and scuzzies. And what you're going to be trying to do is you're going to be trying to get rid of all your scuzzies. You've got a little spinner uh, on the side of the toilet, and depending on what you get, you're going to either uh, be putting your scuzzies in there and flushing. Uh, there's different variants. Uh, like you can switch, you'll be switching off sometimes. Like you'll flush, then he'll flush. And you're hoping that the scuzzies do not come out of the bottom. Because if they do, you're going to have to put them back into your cup. Um, this is a silly kids game. Definitely not meant to be taken seriously, uh, but just the theme alone makes me laugh. I mean, who thinks of these games? <laughs> but if you just like silly games that have a weird theme, uh, I would recommend Big John. Okay, folks, that does it for us this time. We will see you next time for numbers 80 through 71. We'll see you later. Keep on gaming.